Hello YouTube, uh, so I trade people back again. This time to explain to you how to play aggressive like decks. Let me explain to you a couple of type of aggressive decks. Uh, Black Bane was considered to be very aggressive. Light Sword was considered to be very aggressive. And uh, new decks right now that are currently in trend are Six Samurai and One Point Infernities were. Let me explain to you the difference between those decks. So Black Bane and Light Sword they are meant to be played aggressively, or that was how they portrayed. But I played both of them very conservatively, so I would save my cards, like I said before, and push when I have game. Because those decks allowed them to. Well, Six Samurai, I know it's a great deck and all, but I really don't like the whole idea of it. Because the pace you have to play at, you have to keep the tempo up. If you don't understand what that means, just check out my old videos. But, um... So your hand consists of Kagamusha, Kageki, that uh, you're forced to make the Shin play. You can't... Like, the whole deck is combo pieces almost. It's almost like Infernities. Like, the monsters aren't really high utility. Like, they can't do anything by themselves. They need to go together to win. But the deck moves really fast like that. They have to play aggressively, so you can't sit on a guy and wait a couple turns. A deck I really do like now that it's aggressive and it can play conservatively is uh, Karakuri. Like Karakuri, how you play aggressively is you make a big field, like a big push, like you spam your synchros, then you set some sort of protection or you hope that's enough to overwhelm your opponent so they can't conquer your big field. So for example, you go with three burritos, uh, Stardust, or two burritos, Stardust, that's the normal play. Next turn you switch your burritos to get so much advantage, like the mountain of advantage you have it's so much higher than your opponents already, so you can't do anything about it. Same ideas with Sheen. Burrito gives you pluses, Sheen's give your opponents minuses. That's how that works. But Kara Curry, the reason why I like that deck more than Six Samurai, is because Gear Frame's really good by himself. He can become a floater. Um, Fortress is really good because he cancels with Stardust and hits a card off field. He cancels with Sheen. Uh, there's all these low fire engine, like it goes Colossal, Armory Arm, Daniel Lion's good. All these little cards by themselves make the deck good. But if you take out some cards that are low utility, like if you don't understand what utility means, check my old video as well. Cards with your, uh, low utility, like Instant Fusion, sometimes Limited Removal, just cards like that. You take a couple of those out, you put some more high utility in, the deck becomes very consistent and you can play it like a conservative deck. But it's also an aggressive deck. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, Alright. So, the deck will make Karakuri level 8. Level 7. Let me explain to you some of the cards. These cards are like your boss monsters, excited, like quote unquote, that's what people call them. So I'll just try not to make up a new name, confuse you guys. So, as soon as he comes out, he replaces himself. Because it takes two monsters to make him, and he comes out, he brings out another monster, that's one card, and the monster switches to defense mode, giving it be a uh, Nispachi, and you draw another card, so it makes up for himself. And anything that happens to him, he switches to defense mode, so you draw another card, so he gets the plus off automatically. Um, like, cards like this is really high utility. Like, you can, these can sit for a while, and they work good in graveyard and on deck. Like, imagine a plant deck. But not caring if Daniel Lion get removed from play or not. Because Spore is really high utility in his deck. Like all these cards here. He's just a big monster in general. It takes two monsters to bring him out. But Gear Frame makes up for the minus. And even if he runs into Raikou. His effect activates. So he loses this guy. But you, your opponent loses a card out of their hand. Like even the Bryonic this is a really big minus. Like he's just really big. And just works off of a lot of guys. The deck doesn't have a really bad matchup. It's like a plant deck, but it has more like different combos to it. I play part of Avarice in mind because it's more of a control deck rather than an aggressive push. So I can recycle a lot of these guys. Say they get destroyed, I can recycle them a lot. Uh, a card I saw Dub K Dad play. I really do like it. Was a uh, Hamps or er, Hedgehog because it does make Barkion and Beast. And also you can ditch with Fortress to bring him out. Like, it's just a card in here for now, but I'm seeing where that works. Like, in my build, I play only two of these and two of these. Because he's also really good. 
A level 4 can make level 8s, and level 8s are the best synchros in the game, no matter what. Like, it's always been like that. It probably will be like that for a long time. Just how, like, Dark Monsters were the best monsters in the game for the longest time. Uh, because he has high utility with this, because he can do a lot, too. Uh, he can ram to a monster. Say your opponent has... a What's a 16 attack monster? Breaker, I guess. You ram Breaker into it. You grab out quick, which is... Let me find a quick real quick. A quick real quick. Just made a joke in a video. Here you go. You attack with quick. You can bring back this. Or say you have this in graveyard, you can bring this back. So it's like a mini uh, Emmer's Blade engine in here. If you remember that. If you have limiter in hand, you can just attack into a Stardust Dragon. Bring this out. Attack. Limiter. Attack over. Bring back this if you have it a tuner. Just make and go off from there. Like, cards like that give it high utility, and it's also a very aggressive deck that can also play defensively. So the higher options you have, the better options you have for playing. I never really liked the whole one push deck, because you really don't have options if your opponent stops a block. Like, six samurais, Beagle, keys on, keys on, all that plays. Like, the only way to win is to overwhelm. You can't, like, trick play your opponent. They can go for the Morphing jar or something fancy like that, but every deck can play that as well. This is why I like this deck a lot, because it has a lot of trick plays with the machines, has a lot of trick plays with the Lone Fire Engine with Dandelion, and it has really good synergy together, so it blends really well, because it makes level 8s like nothing. And also when Trishla comes out, like the deck can make Trishla like nothing too, because 3, that, and like a level 2, either be the 2 tokens, or even um, Hedgehog. The deck makes a lot of things, and what I'm really trying to test out right now is this card. Where is it at? Where is that super tech card? Here it is. Desynchro. Because when you make Burrito, or Burri, you bring out a guy, then you go Desynchro, and you bring out another guy. Well, that's it. Let me know what you think, and see if you like this video.